Hello, Oscillator Sync here. These days, it is increasingly rare that I should rush out and buy a piece of musical equipment on the day of its release, or pre-order something even. And that's not because I'm invulnerable to gear lust. It's just that with age, the time it takes to deliberate a purchase and kind of the self-knowledge of the type of equipment that I'm going to gel with, it just takes a little longer for me to pull the trigger. That being said, when small UK-based gear manufacturer Decade Bridge announced that they were releasing a lo-fi FM-based drone synth, You better believe that I rushed to Etsy and clicked the buy button on the pre-order. Because Lord Almighty does lo-fi FM-based drone synth sound like the sort of thing that I enjoy. And it arrived yesterday and I unpacked it and plugged it in just to sort of check that it worked and suddenly two hours had just disappeared. As I sat and explored what this instrument could do and enjoyed the sounds that were coming out of it. And so I just wanted to share it with you because I suspect for many people uh, you won't have even heard of the manufacturer, let alone the SN as it's called, or the tin, SN being the elemental symbol for tin. And those of you who are dronefully inclined this might be just the thing that you're looking for. So this isn't a sponsored video, this is just me wanting to share something that brought me a lot of joy while I was playing with it last night. So let's explain what it is and what it can do and then make some sounds with it. So the TIN is a digital FM synth. It has three operators, the carrier, which we can hear at the moment, which has a pitch control here. And let's just take a moment to enjoy this sine wave because it's got fluff. This is also CVable. And then we have two modulators uh, which are uh, harmonically related uh, depending on settings of some of these switches here. Uh, we can't hear the modulators effect at the moment because the FM amount uh, is currently turned down. So let's just bring this up a little bit and adjust our modulator pitch. Again, like the carrier pitch, the modulator pitch and the FM amount are also CVable. The algorithm button here switches between a bunch of different algorithms for the operators. Actually, at the moment, um, what we're hearing is just a two-op synth. We're not hearing the second modulator. Uh, but as we cycle through them, you can hear the effect of the second modulator. And as we 
go through the different algorithms, how those operators are interacting is going to change. And that's going to give us access to different tones. Currently that low pass gate has been held open, which is why it is droning. Uh, but we do have, even in this mode, this three-way switch which affects the response of the low pass gate. In the centre it's basically just being a VCA, which is why we get all of this fur and fluff, which I like honestly. But we have two other positions here, which effectively darken the overall sound hide some of that fluff if that's what you need to do. Personally, for a lot of things I do like it in the centre because I like that hiss. If we do bring that switch down, that's going to close off the low pass gate. And if we patch in some CV there, we can trigger that gate. Just changing the envelope shape here. So you can kind of set it up to be a little FM voice. Personally, however, I'm more interested in it while it's draining. The rest of the switches here, these three, change the relationship between the operators. Um, I'll start with this one here that says Mod 2, and this changes the relationship between the two modulators. Um, so we have a uh, basically octave difference at the top here a 1.5 multiplier between their frequencies in the middle and then a two octave down I think it is a four times relationship at the bottom here which when it gets really low I think more or less gets into audio rate and gives you more of a almost vibrato to the sound which is really cool switch here, the all pitch, changes the sort of CV range for the carrier and modulator. At the bottom here, it's sort of tracking fault per octave if you were to put um, CV in here at kind of a lower range, so we're not really getting into the really scrunchy part of the FM here. In the middle, It ups that range so we get into that scrunch. So we're right up into that kind of sideband madness. And in the up position it kind of decouples them from sort of meaningful faults per octave, giving you a more free relationship between them. But really the relationship between the carrier and the modulator, I'll just come back into the 
down position here uh, is affected by this link control. So starting with it in the middle, actually, uh, you can hear that we're getting our ratio thing happening with the modulator. And with this down or uh, in the middle, and this in the middle, if we move the carrier pitch now, the modulator is going to move with it. So you basically maintain that timbre across the pitch. Yes. Um, in the down position, they are also linked, so you can hear that the modulator and the carrier are moving together. But the relationship here is different, so you're not sort of maintaining the same exact timbre as you move up and down. You're also able to find in this mode more of those kind of atonal relationships which allow you to get this kind of frequency beating in the up position the two of them are decoupled so the modulator is no longer going to follow the carrier which allows you to kind of play them independently to get sort of the freest range you want this in the up mode and also this one in the up mode and now your modulator and carrier are completely independent allowing you to dial in anything that you like Final thing I will mention is that we do have an input for the algorithm here as well, and that's a sort of a trigger input. And each time it receives a trigger, there it's going to change the algorithm. Which makes for a really interesting a really interesting uh, way of performing it. You could of course I'm running that from a sequencer, you could of course plug that into a trigger pad that you're playing, or even just the gate output from a keyboard. find some sounds. FM percussion is of course a really lovely thing and so I'm feeding the tin a sort of snappy envelope sequence into the low pass gate and we can make some some drum sounds. Let's try and find like a hand drum 
with the carrier high and the modulator low. Go extreme and find some more metallic sounds. Symbols. Change the envelope. Try and find a kick drum of sorts. Just a little bit of overtone. sounds. You can also change the low pass gate response to darken things up if we want. Yeah, good fun. Of course, changing the algorithm around is going to give us other sounds as well. That's really cool, Woody. That's really cool. Cool hand drum sound. So lots of nice FM percussion to be had in here. The one thing to watch out for, however, is because this is a passive low pass gate. It requires uh, quite a lot of voltage to start to open up, which is common with passive low pass gates. So to get it to be properly snappy, what I've had to do is mix in a static voltage, uh, which is just held just before it opens, so that when my uh, envelope comes in, it instantly opens. Um, that's a common thing you have to do with passive low pass gates. You could, of course, just take the output and run it into a VCA if you had one spare as well. And then you wouldn't need to worry about that. FM percussion is cool. So although this isn't the way I probably end up using the tin that much, I thought I'd put a patch together where I threw a bunch of CV at it, all the CV that you can throw at it. So what have we got going on here? So the first thing to note is that the all pitch is set into its false proactive small range. And the link here is in the down position. So the carrier and the modulator are following, but not in that kind of ratios mode. I have two different pitch sequences going to the two pitch inputs of different lengths so they kind of overlap and then I've got a smooth random going to the FM amount so that we just constantly get this change in the amount of FM that's happening I've got a sort of offset triangle 
sort of somewhere between a triangle and a sawtooth wave going to the low pass gate here. So we're not in drone mode here, but it is being held open for most of the time. And the low pass gate is in the up position, which is uh, darkening the sound, but not too much, so in the down position. Things are darker. It's quite nice in the middle as well, because you get that sort of fur around the note. And then finally, I have a Euclidean pattern going to the algorithm so that the algorithm is changing as everything else is happening and sometimes it makes it more aggressive like it is now and sometimes it really dials it down. Uh, the other thing of note is that the mod switch is in the down position so that the second modulator is running at much slower than the main modulator which is why in some of these modes you kind of get that trilling vibrato it's more in the next three modes you get that kind of lovely trilling thing happening that I really like So yeah, not the main way I intend to use it, I think, most of the time, but it's nice and nasty in places. located my bliss with this however unsurprisingly is in drone mode running into a nice reverb and just enjoying some of these tones is just one of the most glorious things when it comes to FM. And it doesn't have to be brash and harsh, although obviously it can do that sort of thing. But in some of the operator modes, even with the FM amount up high, things are kept kind of subtle and then in other modes let's watch that volume we get that classic FM twang and with the pitch set to its wider set in. We get much more of it. forward to matching this with other drone friends 
I think it would be a really interesting counterpoint to the sort of aggressive analogness of and by aggressive I mean from a purity standpoint of something like Ovum or the Lep Luma noises which I'm going to talk about on the channel soon because this is digital through and through but still beautifully lo-fi and droneful and glassy of course but even when it does that kind of lo-fi grit almost softens things a little and if it does get a bit much you can always switch to one of the darker low pass gates modes being set in its uh, slowest mode and giving us that vibrato tremolo
Yeah. So that's 10 SN from Decade Bridge. There's a link to the Etsy page in the description, although they don't always have them in stock, but hopefully you'll get lucky if this is something that interests you. I'm very glad that I managed to get mine. I'm going to sit and play with this some more. <laughs> 